coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Highlights from the second round of the high school playoffs, including Class 5A's top two ranked teams, Little Rock Central and Springdale, plus undefeated Pulaski Robinson against playoff powerhouse Alma, a rematch of Conway and Russellville, and Elk season open last night at Boxsite. Speaking of hunting, we'll take you down to Ryzen for not only highlights of last night's Wildcat game, but also to meet our Coleman Kid of the Week. And at Hot Springs Lakeside, you'll be introduced to the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. All of that, plus highlights of most of last night's exciting games, all in the next half hour, and all on Hooton's Arkansas Football. <laughs> Take it to him! You stuck it to him and you won it! This is our time of the year. We're down to the final four in class 4A and 5A, the elite eight in AAA and AA, the smaller schools. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas football. We'll tell you how all the teams advanced last night with some big games across our state. And uh, we're going to show you highlights of a whole bunch of them. We'll begin in Little Rock. No bigger game in the state than last night. The Central High Tigers against Hooton's preseason number one team, the Springdale Bulldogs. And class 5A highlights are brought to you by... First Security Bank. The Tigers undefeated and fired up. Looking for some R-E-S-P-E-C-T from the Hootons and starting strong with their defense. Andrew Norman, nowhere to go on the end of round as the Tiger D would keep Springdale bottled up and backed up throughout the first quarter. And watch little Adam Page on the punt return. He's quick, you gotta get a handle on him. If you don't, look out. Big punt return for Adam Page. And did I mention that Central was fired up for this one? The Tigers would miss a field goal after Page's punt return, but Central's defense would again come up big. Springdale quarterback Brandon Martinez spins and fires right into the hands of Anton Williams. He returns it 24 yards down to the four-yard line, and that would set up the first score of the game. Tiger quarterback Clark Irwin keeps it. The Tigers were up 7-0. It would stay that way until midway through the second quarter when Springdale would drive 88 yards to tie it up. Martinez with plenty of time. Finds Norman in the corner of the end zone. It was 7-7 seven seven at the break. Late in the third quarter, Springdale was gaining momentum. After forcing the Tigers to punt from their own end zone, the Bulldogs went right for the jugular on their first snap. But Martinez's pass is going to hang up too long, and Kevin Thornton picks it off at the 5. He'll return it out to the 15, and from there, the Tigers would drive 85 yards to take the lead. Mickey Dean would get the score to make it 14 to seven early in the fourth quarter. A little bit later, Dean would fly into the end zone for another touchdown, and Little Rock Central ends Springdale's season at Quigley Stadium. Final score, Little Rock Central 21, Springdale seven. Hey, go on, baby! Come on, baby! The Conway Wampus Cats at Russellville last night for a rematch of a week two game that Conway won by 10 points and Russellville came out with a vengeance, moving the ball right down the field. Senior Tracy Steiger got most of the touches, but disaster would strike. Nathan Brown intercepted by Seth Irons and Irons will strike while he's hot, taking it 80 yards for the touchdown. That put Conway up seven to nothing, but Russellville would come right back, driving again. Brown hits McKenzie Embry through the air for a first down. Then Steiger will finish it from 10 yards out, and it was tied at seven. A little bit later, the Cyclones would get the ball back and turn to their money man. That's Steiger taking it in for the touchdown. Russell was up 14 to seven, and this one was a shootout all the way as Conway would win it with a two-point conversion in overtime. Final score, Wampus Cats, 49. Russellville, 48. Both Pine Bluff and Little Rock McClellan went on the road last week. McClellan was trying to pull off the feet again last night. The Crimson Lions start strong with defense as Pine Bluff quarterback Nicholas McCree is intercepted by Kenneth Hunter. Hunter takes it 30 yards and McClellan was up seven to nothing, but the Z's would strike back. Cedric Hill on the reverse 
Bong, his blockers for the first down. Then a couple of plays later, Martel Mallet. He'll go right up the gut into the end zone and tied it at seven. Then in the second quarter, it's Mallet again with another touchdown. The two-point conversion failed, but Pine Bluff didn't need it. Mallet finished with more than 200 yards rushing and five touchdowns as Pine Bluff is in the semifinals for the first time since winning it all back in 1995. Final score, Pine Bluff 33, McClellan 7. The West Memphis Blue Devils in the second round of the playoffs for the fourth straight year, taking on Bryant last night. The Hornets in the second round for only the second time in school history. West Memphis was up 6-3 in the second quarter and able to extend the lead when quarterback Vic Brown runs the option like Mike Vick. He gets loose and goes 20 yards on the keeper for the touchdown. Two-point conversion made it 14-3. Bryant needs some momentum, and Big Bowley gets it on the ensuing kickoff. As he sets the Hornets up in prime field position, quarterback Zach Peeler would take it from there, scrambling around. He used it deep, and Blake Zuber comes down with it for the touchdown, and Bryant cut the lead to 14-10 at halftime. But West Memphis's defense stiffened in the second half, and the running attack came alive as West Memphis advances to the semi for the second time in four years. Final score, West Memphis 42, Bryant 25. Hell to the old gold, hell to the black. The Tigers are the undisputed number one team in the state with a 12-0 record after last night's win over Springdale, and next week will be a big favorite at Pine Bluff. Conway's number two and will play at West Memphis next week. The Blue Devils open the season ranked number three. That's exactly where they are this week. Springdale falls back down to number four, and there's Russellville. The Zebras will have their work cut out next week against Central, but they've already beaten a pretty good team up in Fayetteville two weeks ago. After the Purple Dogs, it's South side, McClellan and Rogers. Cabot starts the second 10. Lake Hamilton won eight games this year, as did Jonesboro. Then it's Bentonville and Bryant finishes the year at number 15, followed by Fairview, Benton, Searcy, Texarkana, and El Dorado. Now, Coleman Derry presents the Coleman Kid of the Week. Nowhere in Arkansas is football on a Friday night any bigger than down at Ryzen. In four years, the Wildcats have won 46 games and counting. Ryzen is 12-0 and finished the regular season undefeated for the second straight year because guys like Lee Sadler understand Wildcat pride. Sadler, number 44, carries a 4.0 GPA and can be counted on to make blocks for his teammates, followed by a pat on the back. Lee Sadler, a standout senior leader at Ryzen and our Coleman Kid of the Week. Coming up next, highlights from the Class 4A playoffs. It's Saturday night, and you're watching Hooten's Arkansas Football. Brought to you by Sonic. And we'll begin our Class 4A highlights up at Batesville, where the Pioneers are discovering a new frontier, the playoffs. And they are making themselves right at home. An overflow crowd last night when defending state champ Stuttgart came to town. The Ricebergs took flight on the third play from scrimmage. Elric Robinson, 53 yards, Stuttgart's up seven to nothing. Batesville would come right back. Antonio McCoy getting loose up the middle. He would lead all rushers last night with 137 yards. A few plays later, it's Tim Childress going in from two yards out. Batesville tied it up at seven going into the second quarter and Batesville on the move again. Childress rips off a 30 yard run. He would finish with 13 carries for 82 yards. Now watch Sonic Super Team quarterback Kyle Francis cap the drive. The senior QB scrambles and stretches for the end zone. That gave Batesville all the points it needed, but sophomore Cornelius Strickland would add some more on a reverse, 21 yards for a touchdown. That iced it in the third quarter, and we've got a new number one in 4A football. Final score, top-ranked Batesville, 28, Stuttgart, 7. So Batesville remains undefeated, and Pulaski Robinson was looking to do the same against tradition-rich Alma last night. Robinson looking to advance to the semifinals for the second straight year. Alma looking to move to the semis for the seventh time in 11 seasons. But it was Robinson's defense that came to play on Alma's first play from scrimmage. Big Joe Mason levels Kyle Goodwin for a loss. After a three and out, Alma forced a punt, but Kenneth Moore muffs it. And Richie Sims recovers, giving Alma great field position, and the Airedales would take advantage. 
Sophomore quarterback Joseph Medeiros keeps around the end for a good game, and that sets up Goodwin right up the middle for a touchdown. And Alma was up seven to nothing, but Robinson fights back. That's Mason fighting for a first down right up the middle. Then watch this, Sylvester Stewart breaking free outside. The Airedales can't run him down. 70 yards, touchdown, and it was tied at seven. Robinson's defense was impressive in the second half. The Senators held Alma to just one first down, and Robinson would kick a field goal with four minutes left. That proved to be the difference. Final score, Robinson 17, Alma 14. And here is a look at Hootons Arkansas Football Class 4A rankings brought to you by Arkansas Cooper Tire Dealers. Batesville moves into the top spot this week after dominating defending state champion Stuttgart last night. The Pioneers haven't been tested in two months. Crossit is undefeated. The Eagles have a potent running game and a stingy defense. Robinson is also undefeated. The Senators are living a charmed life after winning two playoff games by a combined 10 points. Valonia is in the semifinals for the first time in school history. The Eagles are probably one turnover away from being undefeated. Harrison won 11 games this year, but the Goblins have lost at home in the second round of the playoffs the past two years. Stuttgart will return most of its starters next season and could make another run deep into the playoffs. Wynn has lost in the second round of the playoffs the past two years. Wynn is followed by Alma, then it's Greenwood, Whitehall, Sylvan Hills at number 11, followed by the Badgers, Lakeside, Marlton, and Paragould, which lost to Robinson by seven points last week. Greenbrier's number 16, then it's Hope, West Helena, Marion, the only team to beat Class 3A Power Rivercrest this year, and Malvern at number 20. Now, the United States Marines present the Scholar Athlete of the Week. In picking up big yards, Hot Springs Lakeside Center John Davis enjoys laying a big lick. Oh, it's great. It really is. It's more fun to pick up the guy, too, afterwards and kind of smile at him. I kind of always get a kick out of that one. I think it's a lot of teamwork and offensive line, and uh, you become pretty close, you know, friends with each other because you're communicating throughout the entire game. The school's first Division One prospect in years is also taking care of business in the classroom. Registering between a three and four point oh grade point average makes this center a hot recruiting prospect. Congratulations to John Davis, the deserving Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks a lot, Joe Paquino, and congratulations to John Davis from Hot Springs Lakeside, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. The Rams had a great season, made it to the playoffs before bowing out in the first round at Valonia. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. We have highlights from Class 3A straight ahead. Brought to you by State Farm. And we'll begin our Class 3A highlights with undefeated and top-ranked Central Arkansas Christian. The Mustangs play and host a super tough Prescott from the 7 AAA CAC and quarterback Jesse Gates watching in the second quarter as Prescott goes right down the field. Zach Martin completes the drive with a touchdown pass to A.J. Lewis and the Curly Wolves are up 7 to nothing. A little bit later in the quarter, the Mustangs go to their bag of tricks as Justin Bentley taking the reverse on the punt and Bentley scoots almost 50 yards. The Mustangs have some momentum. Then Gates will finish it with an 11-yard keeper, and it was tied at seven. And Gates would prove to be the difference in the second half with a 63-yard touchdown run on a quarterback keeper, and that puts the Mustangs in the quarterfinals for the first time in school history. Final score, CAC 21, Prescott 13. The undefeated Atkins Red Devils had beaten every opponent by at least 15 points so far this season, but the Red Devils were playing catch up in the second half last night against Speedy Newport. The Greyhounds were up six to nothing, but Atkins would answer as quarterback Brandon Horn dumps it to Chuck, Chuck Wagon McCoy, and this wagon has some wheels. Nice moves all the way to the end zone. Atkins goes up seven to six. Newport would fire back though. Gets deep inside Atkins territory before Fred Brown fumbles it. Brad Roberts scoops up the loose ball and Roberts races 92 yards. 
They're not going to catch them. Atkins went up 13-6. to The Red Devils missed the extra point, but Lucas Duvall hit the game-winning 21-yard field goal as time expired, and Atkins moves on to the quarterfinals. Final score, undefeated Red Devils 16, Newport 13. East Point said County headed west last night to Shallow Christian, where the Saints are on the march. Quarterback Nathan Embert, 15 yards for the touchdown, and Shallow was up 7-0 early. In the second quarter, Shallow's junior linebacker Jordan Lee intercepts the pass, and on the very next play, Emmert has all day and goes up top. 42 yards, Brady Arthur in the back of the end zone. Emmert would account for 317 yards and seven touchdowns last night, and Shiloh was rolling. East Point set would try to stay close when Razorback recruit Marcus Monk hits P.J. Lacey for the touchdown. That made it 28-12 at halftime, but the Saints would pull away. Final score, Shallow Christian, 59. East Point set County, 24. At Prairie Grove, the one AAA champion Tigers playing host to the Nashville Scrappers, and things looking good for Prairie Grove early. Mason Pinkley, 47 yards on the reverse, and that would set up Robbie Abshire. The sophomore quarterback goes in, and Prairie Grove was up 8 to nothing. A little bit later in the first quarter, Abshire finds Kurt Zellner behind the Nashville secondary. 49-yard touchdown for Prairie Grove, and the Tigers would make it 21 to nothing a little bit later when Absher would hit Pinkley for a touchdown, and the Tigers advance to the third round. Final score, Prairie Grove 23, Nashville 12. Down at Star City, the Bulldogs looking to win their 11th game for the first time in school history against Oak Grove last night, but it was all Hornets early. Oak Grove quarterback Austin Brown passes to James Mitchell. Brown had a big night passing for 138 yards, and Oak Grove led late 14 to 12. But after being stymied for much of the game, Star City would finally take the lead with four minutes to go. John Furneaux hands the ball to Nick Tinsley, who tunnels in for the touchdown, and Star City was up 18 to 14. That was all the lead Star City needed as the Bulldog defense bowls up on fourth and goal from the three. They stop Oak Grove. And Hooton's cameras will be in Twinkle Town again next week for Shallow Christian. Final score, Star City 18, Oak Grove 14. In halftime, you guys, doggone it, you didn't panic. You came out here, we did some things. Defense. Woo. Yeah, you. <laughs> Got down there and we had some people arguing in the huddle and stuff, but then we finally realized, hey, we can't do that. Got back out there, defense pulled it out from their heart and stuff. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings. Central Arkansas Christian still undefeated with a lot of heart fending off Prescott last night. Rivercrest is starting to roll. The Colts have won 11 straight, and all of them by at least 21 points. Pulaski Academy has quietly won seven straight games. The Bruins return home next week to play Gosnell. Star City's in the quarterfinals for the third straight season. The Bulldogs have won six of seven home games this year. Atkins is undefeated after knocking off Newport last night. Prairie Grove hasn't lost in eight weeks. Shallow Christian hasn't lost in two months. Gosnell handed Dumas last night. The Pirates are in the quarterfinals for the third time in four years. Prescott lost that heartbreaker last night on Mustang Mountain. The Curly Wolves were never completely healthy this season. Newport rounds out the top 10 and Waldron's number 11. The Bulldogs won nine games and the four AAA title this year. Then it's the Hillbillies, Oak Grove, which has lost in the second round of the playoffs the past two years by a combined nine points. Nationals number 14, the Scrappers will not advance to the quarterfinals for the first time in 12 years. Dumas is number 15, then it's East Point, Sid County, Ashdown, Warren, Pocahontas, and Boonville to round out the top 20. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Class 2A highlights are straight ahead. More of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Big Red Fina. Play for four quarters. I don't care what happens, good, bad, whatever. Somebody asked me today, they said, what do you think the score is going to be? I said, I don't know, but we're going to get as many as we can get. And so we begin our Class 2A highlights with second-year Glen Rose coach Billy Elmore and the Beavers, who were in the second round for the first time in school history last night at Alzheimer. 
And it was all Glen Rose early. The Beavers capped an eight play first quarter drive when senior Jonathan Hills slams in from five yards out. Classmate Clint had a ball calls his own number on the two-point conversion, and Glenn Rose was up eight to zero. But Alzheimer would rally with 24 first half points, and that's all they needed to hang on for the win. Alzheimer is headed for a quarterfinal showdown at Charleston next week. Final score, Red Devils 24, Glenn Rose 20. And now we head to number one, Charleston, where the Tigers played host to Jesseville from the 5AA, and Charleston took its opening drive 62 yards. Sophomore quarterback Matt Stewart sneaks it in for the touchdown. On their second possession, Charleston and Stewart goes four yards for the score. Stewart would total 60 yards and pass for 56 last night. Jesseville did counter with a 15-yard touchdown run by their junior quarterback, Sean Bates, but Charleston put together another drive capped by this Blake Bates touchdown, and Charleston's defense continues to play well. The Tigers have allowed just two touchdowns in two playoff victories. Final score, Charleston 21, Jesseville 8. The undefeated Boxite Miners playing host to 9-1 Elkins last night at the pit. Boxite trying to get on the board first, but the Elks defense would stuff the Miners on the goal line. Elkins couldn't make anything happen though. And then Ryan Finkus mishandles the snap on the punt and Boxite takes over in great field position. A few plays later, Johnny Osborne takes it in from the nine yard line. Boxite was up six to nothing after a missed two point conversion. Elkins would rally to take the lead in the second and the third quarter, but Boxite's defense stiffened and the Miners hang on to win and move to the quarterfinals for the first time since 1998. Final score, Boxite 30, Elkins 21. The Cross County Thunderbirds invaded number four Ryzen last night with a seven game winning streak. And after falling behind 18 to nothing in halftime, the Thunderbirds finally got revved up on their second possession of the third quarter. Sophomore Kendall Boykin getting loose with the long run for Cross County. We might have a ball game here. Senior Rolandis Hill blasts through with the short touchdown and that cut Ryzen's lead to 18 to six. But the rest of the night belonged to the Wildcats. They scored 20 unanswered points to pull away and Ryzen which beat Boxite 41 to 21 in the 1995 state championship game, will welcome the Miners next week in a quarterfinal showdown. Final score, Ryzen 38, Cross County 6. And here is Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 2A rankings from Arkansas Cooper Tire Dealers. Top ranked Charleston stays there after moving past a scrappy Jezebel team. Junction City scored a season low 21 points last night. Barton and Ryzen rolled in blowout wins. Number five, Boxite put up 30 points on a quality Elkins team. Next week, the Miners will leave the friendly confines of the pit and head south to Ryzen. Elkins is number six and Hughes is seven. Hughes does not travel well and lost at Junction City 56 six to nothing last year in the quarterfinals. Palestine Wheatley goes for its third playoff win in school history next week at Barton. The Bears are chasing their eighth state championship. All timers number nine, the Red Devils were the only team in the state to start the season with three open dates. P Ridge starts the second 10, followed by Cross County, Lafayette County, the Glen Rose Beavers and Gurdon Go Devils. Gillette was completely outmanned last night at Barton. Mountainburg lost a track meet at Hughes, Hector, Danville and Mount Ida round out the top 20.